Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial byte for Oxygen Not Included which is all about the planetoids and clusters. I will cover all of the different starting choices in both the base game and the spaced out DLC and quickly describe what makes each one unique. If you are only interested in how this applies to the spaced out DLC, you may still want to watch the sections about the base game if you plan on playing a classic sized map which is the same between the two versions. If you only want to know about the spaced out DLC sized maps then you can use the video chapters or timestamps in the description. Heading straight into the base game or classic size spaced out DLC map selections, there are 9 distinct types. Also, some of the maps are the same but with a small twist, so taking that into account reduces this to 5 main types. The Terra Asteroid is the default and is certainly one of the easiest and provides a nice balanced map without any particular hazards. If you're still getting to grips with the game mechanics, I definitely recommend this map. Oceana is very similar to Terra but has lots of saltwater biomes to navigate. Although this water can be a useful resource, it can slow down your exploration and expansion on the map, but this means it's still very suitable for less experienced players. Next up, Rhyme is very unique and is the only truly cold map but has many buried geysers. This map might seem daunting for beginner players, but the cold, geysers and wide variety of biomes actually make this one of the easier maps and particularly for the mid game. If you're finding your bases are dying to heat, then this map will help you get a little further and is definitely worth a try. Dante has a forest star which is noticeably different to the temperate star of the Terra maps as you can see on the screen. This means you'll have aluminium ore instead of copper as well as oxyferns instead of algae. There are also no frozen biomes which could make early cooling more difficult. The Vedante asteroid also comes in hot and cold variants and the next map type, Arborea, is a Vedante map with frozen biomes but without marsh biomes. Volcania is obviously a very hot map and has guaranteed volcanoes and magma which will make accessing some areas very challenging. I definitely wouldn't recommend this for beginners, but it can certainly be fun dealing with the heat. Badlands is a dry map with lots of rock, so it's not an easy task to survive on. This map really tests your ability to be creative and come up with perhaps unconventional solutions due to the sparse resources. Iridio is the hot variant of Vedante and food production early on is certainly challenging due to the heat. This map is one of the more difficult, so be prepared for a challenge at all times. This is also the case with Oasis, which I would generally consider the most difficult of all the maps. There is also a lack of water here, and the starting biome is surrounded by hot sand with no insulation. You'll really need to race to stabilise the water and heat situation if you're to survive, but this makes it an interesting challenge. So that covers all of the base game and classic size spaced out DLC planetoids and I've also summarised these main 5 types in a quick graphic here to show the relationships clearly. Moving over to the spaced out DLC, if you choose a spaced out sized map then there are 8 distinct maps, but again this can be reduced to 3 different types and the moonlit scenario. Before I go through these, I should note that what changes in these scenarios are the inner planetoids within the cluster. Every map, even the classic ones, has the same 6 outer planetoids, these being the tundra, marshy, superconductive, mu, water and regolith planetoids. Jumping into the map types, the first is the Terrania cluster which is the analogue of the classic Terra map, and similar to that it's quite hospitable to life and is a good place to start when learning the game or jumping into the spaced out DLC for the first time. This map has two inner asteroids with the teleporter connected to one supplying the oil and the other providing a source of uranium ore for radiation purposes. The Folia Cluster uses a forest star much like the Vedante maps in the base game. It also has two inner asteroids again providing oil and radiation sources each, although the biome composition is slightly different to the Terrania Cluster. Much as I explained in the base game section, you'll have aluminium ore instead of copper as well as oxyphones instead of algae which changes the start noticeably. The Quagmiris Cluster is again similar but with a swamp start which is unique to the spaced out DLC and features lots of polluted water, mud and cobalt. Beyond the start, the inner planetoids are again similar. Finally, the last 5 maps are all part of the Moonlit Cluster scenario and you're essentially choosing one of these to start on and the other 4 will appear in the inner cluster. These maps are smaller still than the previous ones as there are 5 inner planetoids not 3, which means rocketry and shipping are key to making a thriving colony. They can quickly become extremely challenging, but are probably my favourite scenario in Oxygen Not Included. The 5 planetoids names are fairly accurate and describe what you'll find on them. Each one is unique and interesting. Here I'll also touch on world traits, which are the many different modifiers any planetoid can have. As most of these are self-explanatory, and you can read more of the details as you hover over the icons, I won't go into them individually. 
I'll just point out here that I consider metal rich and geoactive particularly favourable traits, and in the space out DLC, crash satellites can be very useful sources of radiation, especially for materials research. For the last section of the video, I want to quickly discuss game seeds. These are the strings of letters and numbers that identify a specific map layout. You can find the seed of a current map you're playing when opening the menu in a game. These can be shared with other players, and it's a fun idea to play the same map with your friends to see how you each handle things. A really useful way to search for seeds is on the Tools Not Included website, which is a third-party site that collects this information. As of the time of recording, they've just relaunched to integrate the Spaced Out DLC, and you can search for seeds on both versions of the game. To do so, you can choose a cluster type and set rules for specific features you want on your map. I've used this on some occasions, for example, to ensure that I have right metal volcanoes and star map destinations. Once you look at a specific cluster, you can see the full planetoid composition on the main tab. All of the geyser information is available on the second tab, and there's also a full map for key points of interest. The star map is also available when selected at the top. Obviously knowing all of this information can take some of the mystery out of starting a new map, so you may wish to only use this partially, for example to check for specific features, or not at all, but it really is a great tool that you can use to have slightly more control over how you want your game to go. To use this, simply copy the string from the top here, and paste it into the coordinates box found in game. So that's all for this tutorial by about planetoids and clusters in Oxygen Not Included. I hope this was interesting, and thanks for watching.